Hello, this is Steve Shaw, National Coordinator of Football Officials and Secretary Rules Editor, and today we're presenting the 12th in our series of media videos for the 2020 season, and we're going to be focused on game action for the week ending November 28th. Now, before we get into our plays, after 13 weeks, we've completed 440 games, and our scoring trend is still up. We're averaging 58 points per game, and that's a little more than two additional points from our previous season. In addition to that, our game time is up, is we're averaging three hours and 21 minutes, and that's five minutes over last year and the year before. On top of this, replays are up. We have about two and a half stops a game. That's about half a stop more per game. So as we work through the balance of the season, the rules committee is gonna really be focused on these influencers around game time. So with that, let's get on into our plays. Our first play is second and goal, and the quarterback's gonna take the snap, circle left in, and he's gonna dive for the end zone right at the pylon. And it's a very tight play, and the ruling on the field is gonna be a touchback. And as we go back and look at it, the quarterback dives for the end zone, but the ball is gonna come loose. And as we continue to look, we see the ball comes loose, goes inside the pylon, and then out the side of the end zone. And so at first glance, it looks like this might be a touchback, but as we look at the feet of the runner, you're gonna see the left foot, it's gonna to touch out of bounds. And the ball is, it looks like it's loose, but it is still no question touching the hand of the quarterback. So as soon as that ball is being touched and the foot is out of bounds, the ball is considered out of bounds. And it could still be a fumble, but it's a forward fumble in the field of play. It did not break the plane of the end zone, so definitely not a touchback. And because that foot hit out, then we should make this third down really at the spot of the fumble where the ball came loose. So very, very tight play, tough to overturn. But just want to understand that when that runner touches out of bounds, whether he's got possession or just touching the ball, that ball is out of bounds. Play two, we have a third and six situation, and the line to gain is the 35-yard line. Now, the receiver's going to lay out. He's airborne when he first touches the pass, and he touches it beyond the line to gain, but then he's going to complete the catch, land. He's got to maintain firm control, which he does, but he lands and completes the catch behind the line to gain. So we spot the ball beyond the line to gain, but what's the rule on this? And so what the rule book says is that when an airborne pass receiver completes a catch inbounds after an opponent has driven him backwards, and the ball is declared dead at the spot of the catch, the forward progress is where the player received or first touched the ball. But in this situation, there is no drive back. This is the receiver's own momentum. So the ball is actually spotted where he hits the ground and completes the catch just short of the line to gain. So replay does a great job, comes in, overturns this, and puts the ball back behind the line to gain. Play three, we're in the fourth quarter, 25 seconds left in the game, and the offense has no timeout. And we're gonna see the quarterback from the pocket, he's under heavy duress, and he's just gonna throw the ball away. And the ball does cross the line of scrimmage, but the crew's gonna to come together, talk it through, and we get a good grounding call from the crew. And the quarterback, he never left the tackle box, so even though the ball crossed the line of scrimmage, if he didn't leave the tackle box, he's got to have a receiver in the area. And as we can tell from the broad view that there is a defensive player in the area, almost makes an interception, but there's no receiver anywhere in that area. So this is a good call for intentional grounding. That's loss of down at the spot of the foul where the pass was thrown. But we also have 20 seconds remaining on the clock. So now we're going to invoke the 10 second runoff. We're going to run the clock down. It'll be reset to 10 seconds and the clock will start on the referee signal. So good job here by the crew. Play four, we're gonna talk about eligible receivers for the offense. And so we know all backs are eligible as long as they're wearing a number other than 50 to 79, an eligible number. And then the end man on each side of the line of scrimmage is eligible as long as that player is wearing a number other than 50 to 79 as well. And so what we're gonna see in this formation is we look at the two receivers at the bottom of the screen, 
they are lined up exactly together on the line of scrimmage. And so only the outside receiver is eligible. The inside receiver, because he is covered up by that outside receiver, is not eligible. And these two receivers have no stagger. What you can see by the two receivers on the top of the screen is there's a clear stagger. So the outside player is on the line. He's eligible. The slot player here is in the backfield. So they're both eligible. And then as we run the play, we're going to have a pass that crosses the line of scrimmage. The slot player on the bottom of the screen went downfield. And so as soon as the pass crosses the line, there's a foul by the offense for ineligible receiver downfield. And you'll always hear the referee, if it's an eligible number, will say a receiver was covered up. And so that's the meaning of this covered up receiver. Play five, we're gonna have a kickoff and the receiver is back in the end zone when he receives the ball. And then there's gonna be some indecision and then he's actually gonna step on the goal line twice, but finally he's gonna take a knee. And the ruling on the field is gonna be a touchback. You can see the headline judge in great position and he immediately goes up touchback. But what's the rule concerning the ball and its position in relation to the goal line? Now, the first point is the feet don't matter. It's just the position of the ball. And we know that going in, just the nose of the football must break the plane of the goal line for the ball to be considered in the end zone for a touchdown. But coming out, the entire ball must get out of the end zone for the ball to be considered in the field of play. And so it's pretty obvious here that the entire ball did not come close to getting out. So it's a correct call of touchback. Just remember, entire ball has to get out for it to be in the field of play. Play six, we're gonna get a throw out to the boundary. And we're gonna get a great catch by number five of the offense. And the ruling on the field is a completed pass. Now, replay is gonna take a look at this. And this is going to illustrate the other side of our toe heel rule that we've talked about earlier. And so as a reminder, if the toe lands in bounds, but in the normal stepping motion, the heel comes down out of bounds, then it is incomplete, that foot's out of bounds and there's no catch. But what you're gonna see here is this receiver, his toe comes down first. In the normal stepping motion, the heel would have hit out of bounds. But as you can see, he does a great job of keeping that heel in the air. And then his other foot is gonna hit out of bounds. So he would, did not have toe heel. The heel never came down. He kept his toe in bounds. So this is a completed pass, a great catch by this receiver. Good job. Our last play this week is a third and two situation. And the quarterback's gonna take the direct snap and run the ball. And he's gonna make the first down. And then he's hit, taken to the ground. And then you see a defensive back comes in and makes hard contact. And we get a flag from our field judge for targeting. So as we know, all targeting fouls are reviewed by replay. And as we take a look at this, you see number 22, the defender, he's gonna go down, he's gonna lower his head and attack his opponent with the crown of his helmet. And he actually makes contact right into the side of the helmet of the quarterback. And so we have an indicator, we have forcible contact to an opponent with the crown of the helmet. So replay can confirm all aspects of this and uphold the targeting foul. And number 22 is disqualified. And really, as we look at the play one last time, the runner could be considered defenseless because he's wrapped up and his knees are down. And then there's contact by number 22. But no question, this is a clear targeting foul. Good job on the field and with the replay. Well, that's it for our plays this week. And we really appreciate your time invested in watching this video. And as we turn the page into December, it is so important that we as officials continue our good practices, social distancing, masking up to protect ourselves, our crew, the student athletes and the coaches our goal is to drive through our finish line for the 2020 season safe and healthy. So best of luck to all this week.